Hey guys, this is Crayfish Carl, and today I am going to show you how to make Pong with Click Team Fusion. Now, this tutorial, this is for the absolute beginner, so if you've never made a game before or you have no programming experience, then this video is for you. So, what we have here, this is the default screen you see in Click Team Fusion whenever you start it up. Now, I'm using the developer version, but for the purposes of this video, it's exactly the same as the regular version. The developer version just has a few extra features. But anyway, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and create a new game. And to do that, we're going to press File, New. Right here, File, New. Now this is the screen you see that has your list of levels. By default, it, it has only one of them. and. In Click Team Fusion, these are called frames. Now, Pong, for now, it's just going to use just one frame. We can go in and rename it to what we're, what this game is going to be. It's going to be the area of the game. So we can double click, or just click right here and type game area. Now, we can go ahead and enter this by pressing this one right over here. Now this is the frame editor. This white box you see right here, this is the area that you see on the screen. It's the valid level area. The gray stuff over here, this is the out of bounds. This is outside of the screen. And since this is Pong, it's going to have just one area right here. So we don't need to worry about changing the size for now. But let's go ahead and add a paddle. We can what we're going to do, we're going to add an active object, and that's basically like your sprites, your moving objects. So we can just right-click anywhere over here and press Insert Object. Now you'll see a list of a bunch of different objects up here. And as I said before, the one that we're looking for is active. And if you don't see it for whatever reason, if you click on All Objects over here, it will show all the objects that you have currently installed on your system. So we're going to go ahead and press Active, and then press OK. And you'll see your mouse turn into a crosshair, so it's going to ask you, where do you want to place this? So we're going to be placing it right over here. Now what we can do it is, uh, this is a little small for a paddle, so we're going to make it bigger. So if you just do one click on it, you'll see these black dots appear around. It, you'll get the chance to resize it if you do it this way. So let's go ahead and just make our paddle about... Yeah, that should be good. Actually, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, like that. And we can space it a little more. Oh yeah, I also have grid lock on. If you, if you want to make it super snap to the grid, I have... This button checked, so as you can see, it moves very according to the grid. But if you uncheck it, it's all smooth. I like to use the grid because I like to be very precise when placing my object, so I'm just going to leave this on for now. But anyway, what we're going to do now is to actually make our paddle look more like a paddle. So if we just double click on it, you'll see this editor which looks like paint or Photoshop or something like that. Now we can use these tools over here to redraw this paddle. We can start by pressing the eraser tool, which is this one right here, and just erase it. Now we have something blank. Let's go ahead and start coloring it. We can make our paddle, let's make it blue. So I click on the blue over here, I'm going to use the fill tool to fill this in. And let's go ahead and give some very basic shading, because I like to make things look a little bit pretty. The graphics of your game, it depends entirely on how well you can draw, kind of, unless you use the object library that came with the game. but. We're in this tutorial series, I'm going to be making all the graphics from scratch. So now we got a fancy colored paddle here. 
So whenever we're done drawing, press OK to save your changes. So now we have our paddle. And also, we can't forget to rename it either because right now it's just called active. If we don't rename our stuff, every active object we're going to get is going to be called active 1, or not, not active, active 2, active 3, active 4, and so on. And if you have bigger games with lots of active objects, it's going to get complicated. So let's go ahead and just right click on it and press rename. We're going to call this paddle 1. And you press OK. Now, what we're going to do next is to give it some movement. If we go over here to the left on the properties window, you'll see this blue running guy called the movement tab. If we click on that, you'll be able to change the type of movement. Right now, it's just static. And static means that this object does not move at all. It just it sits there. But we can change that to eight directions. So if we just click right here, select eight directions. Now by default you'll be allowed to move this thing in any of the eight directions, as that's why it's called eight directions. But there's a problem because the paddle, it's only meant to move up and down, at least in this game. There's some versions of Pong where you can move left and right, but this version, it's up and down. But we just want to move only up and down, so we're gonna go ahead and change the a little bit. So if you click on directions, these are the directions that it's allowed to move. Let's go ahead and uncheck these right here. So now it only moves up and down. And just click on the side. And let's also change the initial directions, because in more... I guess you don't have to do this, but it's good practice just, to, just for consistency. So now... If we run the game, we can do that by pressing run and frame. Now we have our paddle. It can move around. But there's a couple of problems. If you move too far, you go off the edge of the screen. We will be fixing that in just a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and close it. And since we've made some progress, Let's go ahead and save this thing. Let's go ahead and press File and Save. And if you've used any computer program long enough, you know that saving all the time is absolutely important because you never know when it's going to crash. But for now, let's go ahead and just name our game. I'm going to call Uncall Mine Tutorial Pong because I have a bunch of other games on my computer. But you can call your game whatever you want. Let's go ahead and press Save. So now we go, we saved our game. Now in just a little bit, in the next video, we are going to go ahead and add some rules to this thing and make this thing work a little bit more like a paddle. Stay tuned in a little bit.